walk from Tyler and Ben to Keith. Did you know that with a 40-pound pack on his back? Uh, uh, he wanted to get away from the band. He uh, wanted to get away from the band. He wanted to get away from the band. He wanted to get away from the band. And we thought this was a writing. We would send you a tailor. The reason we're doing this, actually, is because June's got a song called The Black Pool. It's 9 o'clock. And we're going to introduce that to you on the tape a little later on. And also later on, um, I think you might like ABC that. News with the and then uh, towards the other side of the tape, in the United States, I'll play the military some commanders in the Gulf have been given the go ahead to launch a ground offensive against Iraq. And they started just hours after President Bush's deadline for an unconditional Iraqi withdrawal from Kuwait on the expired. But as yet there's been no confirmation from the Bush administration of stepped-up military Ken. action. Now so Willa is back. on the line from Washington. Doug, what's the latest? Yes, the Pentagon gives us no comment on the report that President Bush has given the green light for that offensive. We're not telling them that the, the thing. commander and of the West Coast Force in the Gulf, General Norman Schwarzkopf, has a three-day window in which to launch the attack. Feeling OK? And, um... Well, fit the fit, fit the fit, almost. I hope, yeah. Um, continues. now then, Ken, you, you said the, the dog was giving you a bit of a time, Rick was giving you a bit of a, a chase around when we took him through a war. Uh, you know, we tend not to get in the bus now. The By the way, are you still anyway, seeing the doctor or have a lot of is the back okay? If um, we're wrong and they don't, that turns out to be fine. If we do it the other way and we were wrong, it turns out to be a disaster. We would never want to do it. Britain and France oh, have both um, I'm and I'm sending you all the little with cuttings from Coronation Street, Prime Minister John Major, um, which is getting very interesting at the moment. And they're no longer prepared um, to be strung along by President Saddam Hussein. I also thank you French for the President photograph you um, sent us. Operations are um, continuing to develop David looks real tall boy. Um, Iraq is a nice looking boy too. Bush's ultimatum with a missile um, I bet by the time the you receive expired, this another tape, flood was fired at you'll Israel. be in your the Israeli new home, 21 the country without causing any casualties. Oh, let's see. Three hours later, Iraq's ruling revolutionary council um, issued a statement saying it rejected the U.S. deadline and will but, not um, withdraw from I've Kuwait. Got, I've got a job to read with them. more on Iraq's statements of the time, Tony Hill's online from the ABC's Middle East office in the Kazakhstan has been sent to the Kazakhstan. At reasonable prices, I hope. Of the Revolutionary um, Command I mean, we've always kept our prices at reasonable prices, you know. With the allied um, countries. Ken, and are you doing any home brew again? I've got one in the garage the now. I've made a big box of for it. And of the keeps up in the way. Um, Rex and um, Pam came um, last Friday evening. Yeah. And as you know, Rex was 70 in January. Well, he's taken us all out from me. Iraq was ready to face the aggressors on the battlefield and warned it would turn any ground war into a hellfire. This is Tony Hill with Nicosia. Greg Watts with reports from Saudi Arabia that intensive allied preparations are underway for the start of the ground war. It's a lovely place, so it took Alan there when he was here last year. So he said, I'm sure we'll enjoy it. So it's one Friday next month. And Iraqi troops. Um, Allied artillery batteries have been directing heavy fire yeah, well, against known Iraqi positions close to the Kuwaiti well, border. The, the object is oh, to force yes, either with yeah, well, or nice surrender. The, the Allied ground offensive, when it um, comes, will be we a blitzkrieg along many really points on the Kuwaiti it. border um, and possibly incursions deep into Iraq them. itself. Um, Allied military intelligence indicates Iraqi forces are immobile, waiting for the attack to come. Greg Wilder, Saddam, Saudi Arabia. American military leaders say they're confident of the truth of reports of atrocities being committed in Kuwait. Rear Admiral Mike McConnell of the Pentagon says that over the last few days, thousands of Kuwaitis have been rounded up and many are being summarily shot. The Americans also claim the Iraqis have set fire to more oil wells and associated facilities in Kuwait. In Saudi Arabia, Marine Brigadier General Richard Neal 
says another 25 have been started in the last day. So at least 200 so oil wells are burning. And it can offer me one on the 25th. There seems to be a systematic campaign of destruction of wellheads, gathering facilities, and shipping terminals. Anyway, we'll sort that out. Uh, approximately 25% um, of Kuwait it's covered with very of smoke. Oh, yes. You know the hedge at the side of the house. There's a northwest wind out over that area, and a lot of that smoke is being blown into the Arabian Gulf area. In the cricket in the West Indies, Australia's won its second match of the Caribbean tour, beating Jamaica by an innings and 137 runs. The victory came after Australia dismissed Jamaica in its second innings, 174. Just repeating, reports persist in the United States. Yes. The military commander had been given the go ahead yeah, for the ground defensive. ABC News. Good morning, David Taylor with the State News. It's claimed Queensland exporters now have brighter prospects of selling a wide range of quality goods, especially food, to Japan. A trade expert with the Queensland Premier's office, Richard McAlary, says Japanese authorities were making a major effort to boost trade. Yeah. Mr. McAlary was addressing the state conference of the yeah, Institute so of Chartered Accountants on the Sunshine Coast. Yeah, so it makes too much gone, but it looks space at the side of the house now. Actually, you could build another extension. Anyone who's got the money, you know, could build a garage on the side. If we win on the lottery, might have one built. Because it looks like we're here. The Queensland Sorry, Health Department is examining um, ways of developing um, a quick still, diagnosis like it, so for the fatal move? tropical disease meliodosis. The Director of Environmental and Occupational and Health, Dr. Ron Ram, says the phone. department is also yeah. considering a study of certain um, areas in Townsville that could be more vulnerable to meliodosis organisms. The disease contracted through the skin's exposure to wet soil has claimed three lives in Townsville so far this year. Dr. Ram says a quick method of detecting meliodosis would be a priority. The test uh, is very often RM. national funding available for that sort of project because it's got a national interest as well as a Queensland interest. And that's what we look at. Um, it's a fairly long project. But, um, project. I expect, <coughs> I expect to really settle in with this guy. Beryl and myself are going to see Irene next week. Um, I got to meet Beryl and make arrangements at the weekend. Um, she seems alright. Um, she's getting up a bit longer in the day now. So, um, by the way, I had a phone call about three weeks ago, one Friday night, that the, um, one of the carers rang and she'd fallen again. So they had to take her back to the hospital, the victim, fortunately to be a they didn't have to keep her in, the but she'd um, fallen trying to get on the, the toilet blade. apparently. It's still but, um, not known if there's been an inquiry into the claims right, the that the police officer was again. framed over an so alleged that's about murder conspiracy. Ago, but, Premier you know, Wayne well, Goss says it's up to the Criminal Justice to Commission to decide right. if there's to be an inquiry um, into the case involving police sergeant Laurel Saunders. Sergeant Saunders has been calling for a public inquiry after she was found not guilty of four charges, including one which alleged she conspired to kill a police superintendent. Nadia Farha reports. It's the loose negotiations between the two parties are continuing, but a hiccup has been the payment of Sergeant Saunders' legal costs that the inquiry if it goes ahead. However, Mr. Goss says he will get to his feet as far as concerning the issue. I just need no advice, no advice. So when I got home, my last advice was that the Criminal Justice Commission and the Well, she's supposed to be going for physiotherapy this morning at um, the hospital. And the taxi, not the taxi, the ambulance was supposed to pick her up at 8 o'clock this morning. And she was still sitting there ready at August 9 to exercise land rights over large So Fred got on. The the hospital, the and the name was put Paradise, down on the um, ambulance list. The so she's for not gone, so she's very upset values. about it, However, because she said it's put in her back a bit. She's not very good on her legs or anything, but still it's early days, and she's got no use in one arm, and she can't see very well out of one eye. 
Sitting there, I think she could the get right in a um, few more Nothing's weeks to come. Let's hope so, anyway. And it was his um, sometimes she's a little bit depressed, but she's anyway. all right this morning. Now she's got over and not picking her up. And she's got to ring Premier up the day before to make sure that she's down on the ambulance list for next Friday. I've been to have my hair done this morning. Been and bought a pair of new boots for next year. Valerie, Valerie's been 
every time we've Sometimes college we played there. The but he's playing again on this right. Sunday, so, uh, yeah, the um, meet up with them for 20th lunch and then, uh, February. And he's not playing meet up for, until uh, May. An evening and meal of course, for the as night we say, some, further on some of the chappies are right. away and, on and holiday it, next um, month. More than a bit and of a say we're today, away but, all April, so we're not playing again until May. But anyway, Colin will be playing in Bay Hill. And of course, being fairly warm, yeah. not not excessively so, but just quite pleasant. And, and being close and, to the um, weather not being bad, quite cold. Please tell that Ralph's on top of the world again. On the old body, and yeah. of course the mind's got to get into gear too. Ralph and they've done very, very well. I'm sure yeah, you enjoyed your year with them. Just a little bit more about the reenactment. Is this just was this just one leg of it, or yes, just one leg? But anyway, now. Look, came take up on care now, Ken, what's back, to, uh, and don't do too much work, yeah. and then and the, uh, the kids walk, uh, in regards to everybody over walk there. Yeah. Bye. 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 And uh, so that's the bear track. The black and now another group of people are taking over and walking uh, to um, what a beautiful spot on a Saturday night. So that's their trek, and now another group of people are taking over and walking uh, to um, Euclid on starting on Monday. At Euclid? Mm. That's a tough little spot too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that, that, uh, that's their future walk. That, that could be a little bit here. Things haven't changed too much. Des, there's a lot of re reenactments. Well, they happen from time to time with various sorts of reenactments. What sort of things are they doing? Are they going to do anything? I mean, is there any specific point to the reenactment? Well, as far as our local group is concerned, the school children are involved in the reenactment. Yeah. Uh, they're involved in the reenactment. 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 They're involved in
that you made up for the black blue sky Some for the fear of America There was always a rush to make my life Make it So that's uh, okay, uh, history, uh, reliving history, remaking history. Yeah. Yeah. And what we, as uh, the Reverend Fred Mackay said, uh, this is one of the jazz places I played at. He's quite a good player. Know a lot about him. Play he's one of our great, one of our drummer from Spain. And we just muck in. And one of these numbers, I went back, especially one Wednesday evening, to play. Hospitable territory, and there were not a lot of people, uh, Aboriginal people around in the area uh, back then. Mm. Anyway. I've mess messed this about a little bit now and keep stopping it and starting it. I've said something somewhere and something else and uh, you might hear me babbling along somewhere. But anyway, whatever happens, um, I hope you enjoy it. I've paid some lessons. I'm playing in bed. So if you just have patience and wait until it starts and uh, hope you enjoy it.
around there and fishing. It might be a bit more later on, but we're about to uh, head down Port Kenny way, that's towards Port Link. But Ross is fishing there today, so we'll be going there to travel a bit today. <laughs> Yeah, hey, well, sounds good. And thanks for calling us, and thanks for having some touch with them. All the best, mate. Good. Thank you. Yeah, same to you. Bye. Uh, double three nine two triple seven is our number. O two is the card. You can reverse the charges if you'd like to talk to us. We're going to talk about snails in okay. just a minute after we, we listen Colin to this. Colin had a very, very special request, but he's going to keep on playing. <laughs> this is for, uh, believe it or not, Harry Jinks. Does anybody remember Harry Jinks? Trumpet player. Right here. He did his number. Sure enough. Really gone berserk as far as their numbers are concerned. If you've ever been to the 
Kurong. No, I haven't. I want to go to Kurong. Museum to work in their mollusk collection, and the interests grew from there. Yeah, right. I wanted to. Frog are pretty good indicators in how the whole environment changed. A lot of mollusk species, some species of frogs seem to seem to have disappeared, and they they don't know what um, what uh, happened to them. Suggested that they're, they're very sensitive to the way the environment is going. How uh, how do the snails take? How do snails go? 
Um, Faye's got a little bit of a, um, a technique for taking some of the, the drier conditions in particular. Um, they do uh, relate to the bait, which is sort of like a hibernation, and they can actually survive for, well, have been quite years just lowering them with the balloon and sitting. It's a very dry um, of the year. As we do, for the large number of species that actually live in the areas like the Kimball and the roof. Right. T- would, well, tell me, how many species of snail would we have in Australia? Oh, about 1,500. We found. That we don't know about. Don't know about. Mm, isn't that amazing? Where would most of those be in Western Australia? Um, well, in the east coast, they're basically in, in the rainforest, and there are areas of rainforest we haven't looked in yet. Um, the Kim... Then adult size. But you get the big panda snail up here in the southern Queensland rainforest, and it's got a shell as big as an apple. Um, overseas, you can get uh, the giant African land snail that grows up to about eight inches in shell length. That's quite a, an enormous beast. Mm, I don't even like talking about eating them because some smarty will say, oh, we should be, should be um, developing that resource, you know, everything that so they can get a grid out of, they seem to want it. But uh, are these, um, uh, these snails are edible or many of them edible? Well, um, a colleague of mine, Rod Simpson at uh, New England uh, University at Armidale, is actually looking into um, the out. possibility of uh, using some of the Australian native species as a table snail. Right. Now, they're all probably edible. The only thing is, once you cook a lot of these things, they don't quite turn out the way you might expect. And um, people don't tend to eat a lot of things they don't like looking at. Um, what we found is that boiling some of those species up, they just turned into a, a pile of mush. But uh, there is one species, a native one here in uh, sort of central western Queensland, uh, it's called the apple snail. And it looks like it being a, a quite a, a marketable thing. What needs to be done now, of course, is, is, is to develop, find out a little bit about its biology, breeding, etc. Yeah. Well, he's going to come call it on top of that. He's going to come and do a few more. He's going with it. I'm still on the guitar. Tell us, from your point of view, um, some of the more interesting stars that people have Some of the manner uh, music. Now, I'll just explain to you that I took my little transistor and I just picked it up and stuck it right at the back of the stage. So it's not set in one position. So this would be probably not as good as the one we just heard. But um, anyway, if you can't hear me speaking, it's because we're right behind the speaker. So anyway, we're doing the best we can. Have a listen. Hope you enjoy. This is Els at the Manor and Stephen plunking away on the banjo. Each species lives. Yeah, I've heard the same, uh, same proposition put forward about insects. 
talking to Renee and what prompted this was um, um, that the program we did from 3LO like the uh, the carnivorous snails. Tell us the carnivorous snail story. Are they are they worthy of a film? <laughs> or are they a little less fierce now? No, they... Uh, well, I've, I've only ever seen a, a few examples of them actually devouring another species of snail. But from what I've read in books, they are pretty fearsome in the way they attack um, another another snail. Uh, they have a specialisation in their body structure. They have a very long neck, so even if the snail decides to withdraw into its shell to try and escape from the carnivorous thing, it's got a long enough neck that'll go in after it. And it's got these um, dagger-like teeth, in which just virtually rip the flesh off the, off the other snail. I mean, people didn't really know too much about it. I mean, it's more of a crime these days and everybody, you know, is aware of the fact that you shouldn't be transporting these things from one place to another and there's still people trying to bring in snails from overseas, which, um... But the garden snail is now well established. I'm not sure it will ever, ever eradicate it. Um, and uh, it's actually been farmed by a few people, uh, one in New South Wales that I know of, a lady, and another one in Victoria and being supplied to restaurants. Good. And, and uh, native snails, what, how do they uh, handle uh, urbanisation or suburbanisation? How do they uh, handle uh, urbanisation or suburbanisation? That's good. And, and uh, native snails, what, how do they uh, handle uh, urbanisation or suburbanisation? How do they uh, handle uh, urbanisation? How do they uh, handle and um, native snails? What? How do they uh, handle and, um, native snails? What? How do they uh, handle? Uh, how do they uh, handle what? How do they uh, handle uh, urbanisation or handle uh, snails? What? How do they uh, handle? What? How do they uh, handle? Snails? What? How do they uh, handle? Interfered with the native snails moved straight away because native snails, I'm starting to find, are a very good indicator of the, how should I say, the, the forest type, the, the vitality of the forest. And um, the, the more unusual forests have the more unusual snails. So, um, and uh, suburbs don't have many at all. What about in water and fish ponds and that, that snail? Do we... Yeah, we have freshwater species too. Um... Fish, because they're quite a few snails. We know them from, say, the Middle East area and in Asia, which are involved with um, parasitic diseases that are plaguing those areas, such as shit and mice. I suppose when you get away, if you could, can, um, you uh, travel to the Kimberley by the sound to look at the snails. Well, I haven't, I haven't been to the Kimberley. I had an invitation when Alan was doing work over there to go on a helicopter trip, but I was basic work is centred on Queensland, right? And um, places I've been to, uh, I've been up to the east. 
here at the bottom of the cassette uh, here with the lever. You can see the U.S. with a lot of holes out. Probably about, yeah, it might have been 120,000 kilometres. Mm. And you like travelling? You like uh, getting so out in the field? The the oh, it's it's, oh, it's tremendous. And, uh, really, it's really I mean, sometimes you don't feel like coming back. <laughs> but uh, we did a trip to Cape York. So I don't think it really mattered as far as we went 42 um, days camping at different uh, uh, river bank every night. And uh, really, but, um, you see some wonderful sights. That sounds uh, wonderful, isn't it? 42 days is a long time, isn't it? A long time to it's a long time, record. but uh, how do you adjust to, to um, it's if you want to. Yeah, so suburban life. Yeah. 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 Been out like that. So, oh, yeah. it must be pretty yeah. hard. It gives us, it's a little um, bit hard, yeah. You feel a bit deflated when you come back for a couple of days. But usually you find you're so tired, you have a couple of days in bed. Um, if you pull yourself together because when you're out, we're out going, we'll be going from 6 in the morning till 10 at night, you know, by the time we've collected all the uh, animals, preserved them, photographed them if, if we want to, you know, and it's no, you can't find a photograph of a snail, you know, live, you know, in a particular um, pose. I mean, they might look slow, but they're, they're not uh, very uh, uh, photographic uh, subjects. Uh, right. Tell me, um, you're at the Queensland Museum, and I suppose one of the things about, or one of the reasons I like to talk to people like you is, is to um, let the, uh, everybody know about snails and these things. I mean, people tend to ignore all sorts of things if they just go past and yes. pretty birds singing and stuff like that, and people don't even notice it. Um, but um, I suppose and, one thing um, they can go to the museum and, and, and see so some wonderful like snails, so I suppose. If you want to use this uh, tape oh yes, we, for recording, yeah, we have the, quite a um, uh, few displays. Sort of thing, um, they're always welcome to the um, to give me a call and come in and see the, the collections the themselves, which aren't uh, open to the, the public uh, as such. I mean, what we have on display in the galleries would be less than 0.001% so, uh, of what we have in our collections. Really? Um, our I'll be very glad you remember. And that includes the snails. I estimate it's somewhere between one and a half and two million specimens. That uh, that doesn't. Uh, I mean, that sounds large, but compared to some large museums like the Australian Museum, it's, it's still um, still quite small. Um, and do you want people? One thing. Go on. No, one thing you might be interested in is that, that there are quite a few amateur collectors of these things too, and um, and they have some very large collections. I know a person, in, uh, Vince Kessner, in the Adelaide River, of the Northern Territory, and he's a and he's at the Adelaide River. He keeps them at home. Well, he keeps them at home. Yeah. All right. And, and if people um, uh, want to identify snails or something like that, they want to be Can they do that sort of thing? Get oh yes, they're always free to, to bring anything in, and, and we actually get a lot of our interesting find sometimes from people just, you know, picking really something up in the yard and, in the and just wanting to know the name of so they go to the museum or they phone up, uh, we'll go out and pick it up and uh, you never know what you find. Well, there you go. So, uh, the amateur collectors are supposed to be famous and stuff. Oh, yes. Well, we have about 12, 12 amateur collectors that we have in Queensland too. really moist environments which we tend to create by, uh, as you say, gardening. Slugs look like a, a snail without a shell. That's all they are. Are they? They're, yeah. in, they're, they're in the same, yeah. And some of the shell species and slug species are in fact very closely related. And could you eat those slugs? I mean, it's probably treated them. Oh, yes. I know, oh, it's not a good subject all. this time of the morning. There's <laughs> a lot of late rice that's just ripping into the toast and eggs and stuff. They're probably all edible. They're probably all edible. Um, what you need to do with... I'll just... Slugs on toast. Yeah, slugs on toast. Because um, once you pull the snail out of the, the shell, of course, I mean, it just looks like a slug anyway. Slug and butter. Go on. 
Um, you can eat the garden snail. I would just advise people if they have any ideas about running out in the yard now and having yep. snails for lunch. Yeah. Um, you want to be careful because they could have been feeding on an noxious weed or, you know, say an oleander treat or something like that. And uh, you can get second yeah, poison. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we always advise people if they're thinking. I think there'd be nothing. Um, in New South Wales and Victoria for the restaurant trade. Um, the common gar garden variety snail. Snail. That's the one. There you go, mate. So next time you step on one, you think you won't get that. <laughs> slugs too, slugs. No, I couldn't. I, oh. Look, I must admit I've never eaten this cargo, but that's probably because I'm a bit of a first I've not had the chance, actually. I mean... Actually, if they're done properly, and I, I stress properly, there's only, I think, two restaurants I've ever had them in that they, they taste halfway decent. They aren't too much different from, say, a, a, a smoked mussel. Mm. But, but, but it's just... Uh, yeah, go on. It's but, just, I know, the thought of, uh, you know, but, I mean... But food, the frog's yeah. legs, too, John. I, you know, I saw that little, you know, that picture of the... The little frogs limping out the back of the restaurant with him on crutches, you know. Um, legless, limbless, the limbless frogs association. And I, yeah, I've but never been able to come at frogs legs since then. It's a terrible, tragic picture. Yeah, come on. Yeah, Sorry. The only thing that's a, you can eat all the snail, the only thing that's really left over is the shell. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, the shells are nice. The shells yeah. are... I, uh, as I said, when I was on Fraser Island, I picked up a few shells of, you know, like they're obviously dead. Um, well, there's no snail in them; they disappeared. Yeah. And um, and they were they were lovely, little sort of banded, striped sort of uh, mm. uh, turnout. And dark. Well, you know, shell collecting is a, is an amazing hobby for a lot of people. Beautiful things, aren't they? Yeah. Beautiful things. All right. Well, I'll, when I'm in Brisbane next, we'll we'll have a plate of snail. Sounds good. Cool. Oh, I'll, I'll yeah. take you to a restaurant that doesn't prop it. All right. Well, yeah, failing that, we're going to just one, get some yeah, yeah. down to my bucket. <laughs> John Standing, it's been lovely to talk to you, and I'll I'll come to the museum and uh, my if anybody would like to um, see your collection there at the Queensland Museum, John's the senior cura curator of mollusks. So we've been talking about snails and slugs and other things this morning. John's been lovely to talk to you. Thank you. Come back on the Thank you very much, Mac. I love your show, mate. Good on. Bye. And Your voice is ringing my silver bell, I tell you. Double three nine two triple seven is our number. O two is the code. You can reserve the charges. If anyone tree typifies the vast dry inland, it would have to be 
mulga. It occurs right across Australia, from central New South Wales to the Indian Ocean, from Spencer's Gulf to within a couple of hundred kilometres of Darwin. Plant communities dominated by mulga account for about one and a half million square kilometres. Mulga is one of the 700 or so kinds of acacia which are found in Australia. The size and shape of mulga varies immensely. It can occur as a tree with a single straight trunk or as a multi-stemmed shrub in the direct of the sun. When rain falls, drops of water's water are directed down the branches that slant upwards from the main trunk. In this way, most of the rain is channeled down the trunk and enters the soil where it can be drawn drawn on by the roots. This is one of the secrets of, for survival in the arid interior of Australia where it flourishes in areas that receive as little as 5 inches or 200 millimetres of rain a year. Mulga is a even during the fires used extensively dish mop at the end. Thank you, Roger. Thank you, Roger. Every day. When I wake up, Thank you, I Roger. save my Made cup from the tree. and sometimes I got Thank you, Roger. Christmas, I got a Spider-Man from Thank Christmas. Thank you, Roger. And then, um, from the the floor, it comes down. And, um, it got spider up on the top, but it's got root. Um, the hole in it, but it still can fly. Um, Aboriginal meaning blackfish swimming is in the southern is in southern Victoria and everywhere they have a sponge that on the potato and it's to raise and you put the this thing up and down and you let it off and it speeds across but I haven't got problems with wrong and I've got to start again and I can run him up the the raspberry out it's the only choice all different and it's all changed so there you go anyway just thought I'd mention that Australia will have a hello Hello, Omega. Yeah. This is Billy. Bill. Yep, Billy from Baduri Island. From Baduri Island. Where's Baduri? Baduri Island, east, about 200 kilometres north of Birdville. 200 kilometres north of Birdville? In Queensland. Yeah, I know where Birdville is. Yeah, and we're in Ireland. You're in Ireland? We've been in Ireland for about seven weeks now. Oh, right. Oh, I see, surrounded by floodwaters. Surrounded by floodwaters. Well, I'm with you now, mate. And from the air, they're in the spectacular. I bet it does. What do you do there, Bill? I'm the local carpenter, Manga. Oh, right. And how many people in Baduri? About 60. 60. Had a good time. Yeah, well, how long's the water been uh, around you? About seven weeks. We've been isolated. And what, you're getting stuff flying in and... Yeah, the SES has been really great to us. Uh, getting caribous down with the uh, air force. Yeah, well, how's everybody coping, all right? Oh, great. Yeah? No worries at all. Well, tell us a bit about it. What, what, is it standing there or is it flying away? She's just standing there. Yeah. Slowly dropping at the moment, but very, very slowly. Well, what's the, what's the prognostication? What, when do they reckon it'll be, uh, you'll be able to get about your business? It's hard to say. If, if we don't get any rain within another two weeks, we might get out within three weeks. But, you know, it depends on the rain. We got uh, the Regina Channel one end of us and the Diamond Tina Channel the other end. And they're just old water in. Well, is this, when was the, this, when did this, can you remember the last time this happened? Uh, well, I've only been a local here for a year now. All right. But uh, the local say it's, it's about the best one that has 74. 74, eh? Yeah, the big one there. The Diamond, uh, Baduri, is the headquarters of the Diamond Tanner Shire, mm -hmm. and it's well, the second biggest shire in Queensland. Oh, yeah. You don't hear much about poor old Baduri, but it's really nice. Why did you go to Baduri, mate? Oh, something different. Mm -hmm. Sure is. Just, I'm, I'm from the coast, I'm from Gympie originally, mm -hmm. and I did some travel to Western Dirt in my blood, and I've stayed here ever since. Uh, you got a family? Yes, yes. How do they like? They love it. Yeah? Yeah. That's cool. Well, it is. It is different, isn't it? And that's the that's the nice thing about it. Yeah, it's completely different. The lifestyle of people seem to be different, and it's quieter, and there's less rush and pace, and and you can stop and listen to the silence and all those sorts of things, can't you? Yeah, really great, I reckon. Mm. In fact, last night we sort of made our own entertainment out here. We had a bingo match last night. It was the BNC.